Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so potential buyers have more information about the seller and the business to help them make a buying decision. Before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of this business. It's for an audiobooks and Amazon KDP business created in March of 2018 in the books and information niches. The average monthly revenue for the business is $1,775 and makes an average of $1,716 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale, an Amazon KDP account with 20 Three books, ACX account with 23 books, Ingram Spark account, draft to digital account, email list with 350 subscribers, freelancer contacts, content outline template, and design outline template. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 59700 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So that's a brief overview of the business for sale. Let's hear from the seller with me today. So welcome to the show, Yethin. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks for uh, having me on and yeah, I'm keeping all right. Not too bad. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to learning more about you and your business. So to start us off, can you tell us a little about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, sure. So I'm a general entrepreneur, actually. I've been doing different businesses for a little while now. And my background really is in property. And around about four or five years ago, a friend of mine introduced me to another way to make income, and that was through digital assets, iBooks. books. And it was so different what I was used to expression, you don't know what you don't know. So I found this fascinating. I really did. And I was just like, oh, this is interesting. And one of my big philosophies that I enjoy in business is passive income. And I could see the ability to make money from a very passive perspective. You know, obviously dealing with property, you're dealing with people and tenants and yep. things like this, but you know, you've got souls <laughs> to look after. <laughs> When it came to this type of business, it was a very different thing. And so that's basically how I was introduced to the idea of publishing. And I've been doing it for four years now, and it's been brilliant. Really, I find it very interesting, very fascinating. There's lots of different learning aspects, which have been fascinating. So yeah, that was kind of the background there, really. Awesome. So from real estate to online business. So with all of the different online business avenues that you could have gone, why did you choose specifically to go down audiobooks and KDP? I think one of the biggest priorities really was around passive income. I like the idea of businesses that you don't need to be too involved in. And I find with this business, it's very much set and forget within reason. As long as you've produced a good product, it's very much set and forget. So you can you know, get everything set up, produce your digital asset, do all the bits around it, you know, cover, narration, et cetera, et cetera. And then you don't really need to touch it that much more and just see income roll in. And it's very obvious if you've produced an asset that isn't great because you don't have money coming in. And you know, especially <laughs> once you've produced a few assets that have money coming in, you kind of learn the ropes somewhat. I guess the other side of things was just the opportunity to learn something different and something new. And I find there's a lot of transferable skills. I think when you get into publishing, you learn a little bit about marketing and you learn a little bit about copy and you learn a little bit about you know, advertising and things. And they're transferable that you can apply to other aspects, other types of businesses that you run. Yeah, that's why I was quite excited about this particular niche and why I went down the lines of it. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like you certainly have set up a nice business here. So it's been four years. So why are you deciding to sell it now instead of keeping it and growing it? It's a good question. I mean, and I certainly could keep it and grow it. It's, my thing is, I actually run a few different businesses. As I said, I'm an entrepreneur. So there's a few different businesses that I've got. And there's a couple of businesses that I'm starting off at the moment, totally away from the Amazon space. It's something different, let's just say. And so the funds that I could make from selling this business will just come in very useful. And I feel like I've enjoyed the process, but I wouldn't mind 
taking some of those skills and applying them to some of the other businesses as well. So the funds that I get from this, I'll certainly kind of pull across, but some of the, you know, the brand building aspect, I, I'd like to kind of start pushing into other areas. So that's kind of my thinking at the moment. And why four years? Just because at the moment I've got the opportunity that's come up and I was just like, oh, now might be a good time to sell. I could potentially keep the business as well. It still ticks over quite nicely. So yeah, absolutely. Well, it seems like you have something exciting on the horizon. Maybe we can talk about that later. So through the journey of you building this business, was there anything that you learned from building this that seemed to work? One thing that I've enjoyed is dealing with like the equivalent of virtual people. So I don't have anyone physically I deal with, really. It's all been virtual, so virtual people like abroad, you know, or even in the UK, but just over a computer. So, you know, I've been dealing with agencies that kind of outsource design work or writing or, you know, narration. That's been fascinating, just dealing with people like that. Other things that I've kind of learned about is just, you know, how to figure out how to find keywords that then sell, because that's one of the really important thing. You can have a fantastic book narrated, great cover, but if you put it in a niche or in an area where you haven't got good keywords, it's just going to fall flat on its face. And so, you know, that whole trying to kind of fire it and find good keywords and stuff has been really fascinating for me. So, you know, that's definitely something that I've enjoyed and I've certainly learned. Yeah. It sounds like you might be speaking a little bit from experience. So maybe that leads to my next question, which was, is there anything you tried with this business that didn't work out so well? Yeah. So I don't advertise anymore. And this is the thing that's you know quite nice about this business is there's no advertising needed and organically I make sales. But in the earlier days, I did try advertising. And what didn't work actually was some keywords that I tried in advertising just fell flat on their face. So the click-through rate was just ridiculous. And I was just, okay, and you learn from that, right? You learn from that process. And I tried advertising in certain countries as well, certainly after Amazon started opening up advertising in different countries. So I tried advertising in countries other than like your standard, you know, the UK, US, et cetera, markets. And some of them didn't work out too well either. So that was certainly something that I learned from, I guess. And then... There were a couple of niches I tried. It was a bit of a shot, you know, potluck. Let me try it. <laughs> Let's give this a go. So I did. I tried, you know, a couple of the books didn't do so well. And again, you learn from that. You learn from that experience. But, you know, one of the things that I've learned in this business is if you make sure that the quality of your book is better than your competitors and you make sure that your cover is more standout and more exciting than what's existing in the niche, that really, really helps with organic. As long as you've got a good keyword, that really helps. Again, maybe that comes back to something I've learned from this as well, that, you know, quality really, really, really makes a big difference. That's why I've only got 23 books. I can't remember, 22, 23 books. And the quality makes a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. I just spoke with another KDP seller and he said it took him a full year to create one book. And I thought, wow, "Wow, that's a long time. But I think that just, and the point he was making there is that quality was so important. So yeah, I'm I'm hearing that over and over. Maybe a year might be a bit long. Yeah, my my books didn't take a year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's like, wow. Because once you're in the game of publishing, you come across other people. And I've come across publishers that have definitely taken a long time producing their books. So yeah, it's incredibly long, but you know. I think everybody has a different, I guess, on the spectrum of how much quality to put in their book. Yes. And just how refined you want to be. I mean, you know, you've got this idea of analysis paralysis as well. And, you know, some people, you know, it's perfection, 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 perfection. At what point is your book so perfect that it's ready kind of thing? Right. Sometimes at some point, once you've dotted the I's and crossed the T's, you've got to be like, right, let me just put it out. Otherwise, there's always something you can do with a book, you know, refine this, tweak that, refine this, tweak that. And yeah. A good but, point. Yeah, everyone's different, huh? Yeah. As we mentioned before, it's been four years. So this business is a little bit more mature than one that's just kind of in the launch phase. So now can you describe the amount and the type of work that you do for this business currently for maintenance? Yeah, sure. So I'll be honest, there really isn't much. I mean, once a week, I log in just to check income and sale figures, just for my curiosity, really. Maybe once a month, I might check that the income I'm supposed to get, I do get. And that's about it. In the early days, like I mentioned previously, I did do a bit of Amazon advertising, but I'm not really doing that anymore, partially because I found the Amazon advertising, it definitely increased my sales, but it also increased the amount of work I was putting in. And at that time, I didn't want to put in that type of work. 
hours, let's just say. And that's fine. I mean, some people are very happy to do that. And certainly if they understand Amazon advertising or advertising in general, and even if they don't, it's still you can pretty easily pick up, but I just didn't have the time for it. So I didn't really pursue that. But, you know, there's certainly an opportunity there if we talk about that sure. later, perhaps. But. Well, actually, just make sure you don't forget that because I will ask about opportunities okay, a fine. little bit later. But yeah, but please go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, it's okay. So yeah, so other than that, I don't really do anything else because I don't produce any more books because I'm quite happy with the income that's coming. I kind of had a rough goal of about a K a month anyway in dollars because it's just, you know, it's a nice little, you know, a bit of pocket money coming in, more than pocket money in a manner of speaking. So I kind of got the business to where I wanted to get it to. There was no real interest in, in doing more and it, because of this income and some of the property stuff it's allowed me to look at other things you know other businesses that i'm running and looking at so yeah this is, it's been great actually running this business but no there's hardly any work you know the definition of passive really is this business <laughs> literally an hour a week i think is it and it's fantastic in that sense nice very nice yeah i'm always hesitant to call anything passive but it does sound like you're right there pretty much but yeah, yeah I guess one. any buyers <laughs> who are interested can look under the hood after they unlock this to see how little effort there is. Okay. Well, as we were mentioning before, uh, it sounded like you were just on the edge of talking about some opportunities, but I'll kind of open up the floor a little bit more and just ask if you were to keep the business, what are some ways that you would try to grow it? Yeah, sure. So advertising is an obvious one. So you could advertise with AMS, so Amazon Advertising Services. I can't remember what it's called anymore, but Amazon Advertising, I think. So that's definitely an opportunity. And, you know, there are different markets. So obviously I played around with a few markets that I felt didn't work at the time, but, you know, some markets have matured better. The algorithms of Amazon Advertising have changed since I played around with advertising. So that's an obvious one. And you can also look at advertising wide. So not just on Amazon, but, you know, advertising on other social media channels, advertising with Google, you know, SEO with Google, Google AdWords, etc. So that's certainly an opportunity. Another thing is, you know, maybe looking at producing more books. So expanding the library a little bit more, or maybe taking the existing books and maybe doing translations, because that's something that could really work. You know, so I've only stuck to English, but I know Spanish is an obvious choice because the Spanish speaking market is huge. So that's an obvious one. That, you know, some of the books that didn't do so well previously, you could take those books and, you know, revise them and really polish them off a little bit. So that's another channel as well. But another huge thing that I know I'm very conscious I've left on the table, partly because, again, I didn't want to invest the time and energy into looking into it, but it's monetizing that email list and growing that email list because that email list, you know, 350 subs, subscribers is quite significant. And, you know, some of the niches I'm in, there are obvious ways to look at maybe monetizing, you know, through various channels. Channels. Obviously, if, through the support that I offer, I'm happy to talk to whoever's looking at this, how they could look at some of the opportunities there. If they don't already have skills in that field, that's certainly something I could look at. But there's some pretty big ways to monetize that. Again, for me, it was just a time for energy thing. Otherwise, it's an obvious thing for myself as well. So yeah, there's definitely a few opportunities with this business. Yeah, definitely sounds like it. And add to your note about the email list. I've noticed that for book-based businesses, KDP, audiobook businesses, that email lists seem to feel a bit more like a fan group of subscribers. I mean, it depends on what kind of books that you're putting together. But so yeah, I definitely see there being an opportunity to monetize an email list for those who have them for book-based businesses. Yeah, sorry, just a butt in quick, Nick. I was just going to say there's an article. I can't remember who wrote it. It was something called A Thousand Superfans. Mm. But, you know, if you have a thousand superfans, so, you know, you literally made it. Now, I don't have a thousand superfans, but I'm just saying, you know, some of those subs, you know, probably really enjoy the books and you could probably start to, you know, grow that and use that. I'm giving a few hints about how you can monetize <laughs> this email list. But yeah, there's yep. um, definite channels that you could go with that, you know. And that's a transferable skill as well. This is one thing I've learned is actually just using some of the skills I've learned from from publishing, you know, into other areas. It's a fascinating area. Yeah, certainly sounds like there are a lot of opportunities, but of course, I, I wouldn't want to not discuss some of the risks associated with this. So what do you think are the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? It's a really good question as well, because you've always got to look at the flip side. I would probably say one of the big things is obviously, you know, you're using Amazon as a sales vehicle for the digital asset. You know, you're at the mercy of 
Amazon, right? If Amazon changes their algorithm, so if Amazon changes their terms of service, or one day Amazon, for whatever reason, decide to ban books or something ridiculous like that, you are at their mercy. So that's just something, obviously, to be wary of, you know, their algorithms or their terms of service. Yep. You know, one way I guess I've mitigated for that slightly is I've gone wider than Amazon. So, you know, digital assets aren't just on Amazon, you know, so they are on Ingram Spark and I've put them on Draft to Digital. And, you know, even if Audible were to go down, you know, I've got the physical digital assets. So I've got the file and stuff and so you know you fire away voices and there's other avenues where you could you know put the assets on just to keep yourself a little bit safer but yeah obviously that is a risk you know amazon obviously amazon's the majority of where the money comes in so that is certainly a risk yep and it's a risk that i think a lot of those who are used to being in the amazon space are aware of but yes to your point it's great to know that there are other potential avenues that one could go down should Amazon shut down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, if Amazon shuts down, I think the internet's disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Well, just some housekeeping questions to finish this up. How much support are you willing to offer buyers or a new buyer? Yeah, so I think I'm totally happy to go for the default what's there. And if it comes to a matter of negotiation, I am open to perhaps a little bit more, but you know, that's maybe at the negotiation phase. But what the default is, is what I'm happy with for sure. Yep. Sounds good. And would you commit to a non-compete? Yeah, for sure. Totally happy with that. Perfect. And are you open to something like an earnout? Yep. Again, that's something that I would certainly be open to. It depends obviously on the terms and what we're looking at, but I'm not close to that idea, no. Yep, definitely. Okay. And last two questions, putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think this is a business worth buying? I think number one, it is a great passive income generator. You really don't have to do a lot of work with it. However, what I would say is if you're interested in maybe the digital publishing space or you want to learn a little bit more about KDP or ACX or Ingram Spark or Draft Digital, I've always found if I put my finger in a pie, I'm a little bit more invested in. So, you know, if I was going to put some money in, I don't know, crypto or I don't know, Forex or anything, you know, if I put a little bit of money in, I'm invested in there. And just because I put that little bit in there, I'm kind of a little bit more aware of it. I'm going to be looking at it a little bit more often. I'm going to be keeping more tabs on the news, etc. So this is a, a great little business where if you just want to learn about this area, you know, once you've got a business like this, you're then invested into the area. So even the business is bringing you a bit of income, you can still kind of, you're now in the space. So you could kind of force my bit right word, but you know, pique your interest to kind of keep looking in the sure. area a bit more and maybe do a bit more research. And you never know, you might be like, oh, I could do this and I could do this. And I guess the last thing is there is a lot of potential. There's definitely a lot of potential to grow the business. So a few different areas or ideas anyway there. So yeah. Yeah, those are some great answers. Last question then. Is there anything you'd like to add that you think I might have missed during this interview? No, not at all. I mean, I guess obviously the listing is it's a KDP Audible business, but it's a little bit more than that because you've got Ingram Spark and you've got Draft Digital. So it's slightly wider than just Amazon. Sure. We've kind of covered that. So. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, I think this is the perfect spot to wrap this up. So, Yethan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing your story and joining us on today's episode. And yeah, I do hope. Your business is purchased in the near future and by the right buyer. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate that. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 59700. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.